It's gonna be almost a literal fish out of water. It's gonna be quite the culture shock. How does this? But I'm scared of the road. Leave my family and move to other country. Is this supposed to be like for one people? <laughs> Turn it to this! Yes, you are! I never! Yes, you are. That's not cheating! When you come, I make a lot of love. Really? Don't broke my business. Oh, I'm gonna break it all right. Bruh. Awesome! Well, look at that. There's yet another 90 Day Fiancé show premiering on October 8th. We have like four going on right now. Before the 90 Days is ending, The Other Way is still going, there's still The Last Resort, 90 Day Fiancé UK. There are so many. I remember when we used to have to wait weeks between just one show. Anyways, when this clip premiered and before I watched it, I again got that feeling of excitement that this was going to be a great season. I know, I do that every time and I should know better. I also hadn't watched that preview clip yet when I felt that feeling of excitement. So I definitely talked it up a lot in my head. And I did that because this wasn't just going to be any 90 Day Fiancé show. This was the OG 90 Day Fiancé, the one that started it all. So this had to be good, right? It wasn't going down the path of the other spinoffs, right? It can't, it's the OG. <sighs> oh man, was I wrong. So I watched the preview, and yes, we meet some new couples, but within 20 seconds, my excitement morphed into another dark cloud of disappointment. Let me show you why. Here was the first couple they showed us. When Sophie followed me online, I was like, oh Yeah, oh shit is right. At first glance, this looked like a typical influencer getting on the show situation. Similar to Jabri and Miona, or Sarper and Shekinah, but less extreme and with less filler. But at least there seemed to be some sort of story here. I don't think I actually want to be pregnant. So okay, not too bad. It could go either way. The next couple looks like it's going the Danielle and Miss Clairvoyant route. I am a witch. This couple at least does seem more real and like they could be entertaining. So no, so far, not starting off too bad. But then, then. <laughs> when you can, I make a lot of love. Really? Don't broke my business. Oh, I'm gonna break it all right. <laughs> what? <laughs> First of all, holy jump scare. And their story just sounds weird. Like they had a K-1 visa 15 years ago. Nothing about this seems real in any way. She says she's going to see him, so are they actually even starting the 90 days? And then to top it off, we see the oh-so-familiar Jasmine and Gino are back again. If you have watched my other videos, you know that I have stopped covering them. And it's mostly because I can't show half the crap that Jasmine says. YouTube does not like her explicit descriptions of her and Gino in the bedroom. At all. I'm very close to not being able to cover The Last Resort for this reason as well. But with that, I can shift to different couples since I've been focusing on the whole episode each video, and I have been able to at least censor some things. You know how Angela was running around chasing Yara with her disgusting Bluetooth toy? If you have no idea what I'm talking about and you want to suffer with the rest of us, I'll link that video to this one. I can at least like blur and cover things in scenes like that, but with Jasmine, it's hard to just bleep out everything she says and then explain what she's saying without getting demonetized, if that makes sense. Her clips would sound like this. He made me to on his I gave him the Also, when it comes to Jasmine and Gino, I need to watch them and cover their story in doses. Like, I can't handle these two and their constant fighting for long periods of time. I'm sure that you guys can't either. That's not cheating! And now their drama and constant yelling just feels so forced. Also, did you notice that Jasmine somehow looks different again this season? Huh. So yes, unfortunately, my dark cloud of disappointment is back. The only real couple that I'm very interested in this season so far is that dude that has the guinea pigs and the mom that lives in the closet. No, no, he doesn't. And there seems to be hints of normal problems from some new couples, so that could be interesting. I mean, I'll give it a chance. It's now quantity over quality, and I don't think that this level of quantity is necessary. It seems like they are cranking these out with short filming timelines and scripted scenes just to get them out there. It's also not allowing enough time between repeat couples like Jasmine and Gino. I know that they probably have a contract already, so it's easy to add them in, but I need a breather between their stories and the screaming. I need to not see or think about them for a while. The thing is, my memory isn't great. 
So give me some time to actually forget how annoying they are, let me miss them, and then maybe I will want to watch them again. This also explains why I had high hopes for this new season. I forgot how much I didn't like the couples on the last season of 90 Day Fiancé, but it premiered more than a year ago, so I actually forgot. And the other thing bothering me is what happened to the real stories. Most of these feel fake, and not just scripted fake. I have been suspicious a few times that some of the couples on this show had never even previously met before. Like off the top of my head, Jen and Rishi. The way they filmed it, I almost thought they had never met. And I'm wondering now if they're just putting some couples together for the show, even if they're not a real couple. And now, speaking of fake, I can barely look at this woman. As time has gone on, they seem to be adding more and more plastic and botched looking people as well. It's to the point where these faces while I'm editing at night are starting to haunt me. This is nightmare fuel. If I think back to when the OG 90 Day Fiance first began, I remember tuning in every Sunday, excited to see how these couples would handle their 90 days. The concept of these people coming over to the US and deciding within three months if they would get married and leave their friends and family behind for love was so crazy and interesting. I miss that feeling I would get on Sundays. And I keep telling myself that 90 Day Fiance was so much better when it first aired. But hey, I have acknowledged that I don't have a great memory. And since I hear myself always talking about the nostalgia of the old 90 Day Fiance, I decided that in this video, we're going to watch some of the very first episode of 90 Day Fiance. That's right, the pilot episode that started it all. I have been very negative about these new seasons, especially the more recent ones. So let's do a quick rewatch. And I wanna see how the first episode ever aired holds up almost 10 years later. Can you believe that? It's almost been 10 years. All right. Here we go. I never expected to fall in love with someone who lives halfway around the world. There are only four couples on this first season, and all of the foreigners coming over to the U.S. are actually women. It's hard to leave my family and move to other country. We only meet three of the couples in the first episode. Also, there are only six episodes in this first season. I'm so, so far away from my family and friends. So the differences between these logos is pretty significant. I could see why after 10 years, but the bottom one definitely makes me think more of travel. And the top one is definitely more modern and fits the fake drama we have going on now. And the intros as expected on this pilot are very simple. Everyone like Alan very calmly introduces themselves. And I also noticed that the talking and pace is very slow. Kaylin was able to come to the country through a K-1 fiance visa. I'm guessing this is because everything is not written for them to read or reshot a bunch of times. I never felt like Alan and Kirlium's story was scripted when I first watched them, and I definitely don't now. The only thing that is weird about this is now realizing how big their age gap is and how young she looks. She's 21 here and he's 29, but he doesn't say how long ago it was when they met, which I thought was interesting and possibly creepy. Next, we meet 31-year-old Mike, who is bringing over 21-year-old Aziza. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about these two. Mike was actually recently charged with possession and distribution of child pornography. Sharing my opinions on them after finding that out does not feel right. I started this video not knowing that until I googled them, so I'm going to skip over them. Maybe this first season isn't the best comparison of good and bad with the new one, but the point I'm trying to make is that in general, the feeling during this first episode is very realistic. I find this still being interesting without having to have that crazy shock value we have now. Like Russ and Paola. Russ is bringing Pao over to live with him and his parents, and his parents have some very real concerns. If I stop and think about it, I really kind of get a little anxious myself. When I got engaged, they were in shock. Also, when Pao arrives, this is the first time we hear of any sex talk on the show, and all it is is them hinting that they showered together. It's nothing I would have to bleep out, like Jasmine's segments. We have to save water, so that's why we have to share the, the shower. So tame. You can also feel the real tension when Pao meets Russ's family too. The joke was when he first left was, you know, don't go down there and fall in love and, you know, bring a girl back home. This dinner didn't feel scripted. Instead, it just feels like we're watching them just have an awkward dinner. Every Thanksgiving and Christmas, this is it. And we've been making it for 25 years. You all have to learn. Everyone on this episode also has relatable adjustment issues as well, like Paola not wanting to live with Russ's parents, Kirlium's first experience traveling and missing her family. It's hard to leave my family and change and move to other country. Aziza noticing cultural differences like the city and portion sizes with food. 
There are normal jealousy issues. Everything feels pretty natural. <laughs> like we're on the outside, just looking in. I actually feel something for each of these couples too. And this focuses on their actual journeys through the 90 days. I can't say that I really feel that way about the later seasons. Everything nowadays is mostly just focused on the drama. For example, Bilal and Shida. They were on the most recent season nine. I could not stand Bilal. And I actually thought that Shida should go home instead of finishing the 90 days. And the others on their season, like Emily and Kobe, couldn't stand Emily, Jabri and Miona were fake, I didn't feel that feeling of rooting for anyone. But there also is a pretty fair argument for why the show is so different now. And I have to remember that there is an almost 10 year difference between now and the first season here. Times are not the same as they were in 2014. We now have things like more accessible social media, YouTube on our phones, TikTok. When I think about it, this show now has to compete with more than just other cable television shows. So I do think I understand why they are trying to bring more interest, more shock value, more fights, more villains. I think that the main thing I'm missing in the new seasons is actually liking the couples, rooting for them, hoping they get through the 90 days. They did do this pretty well with David and Sheila more recently. I actually felt like I wanted them to make it. And I got emotional when he proposed to her. We need more of that and less of whatever the fuck this is. Jasmine and Gino want to remind you to subscribe to the Kibbles channel. If you don't, they will give you creepy baby talk. Who's my little baby? <laughs> Who's my little baby? Who's my little baby? Me. Also, for the couples that come on with a social media presence, we get spoilers because they're on social media. Not even contracts can stop people from leaking things like wedding photos or pregnancies online. So I want to know what you think about this. Do you agree with me or have a different opinion? Are you missing on the new seasons what I'm missing? Or do you like the new format that 90 Day Fiancé is using? Let me know. I don't think I'm alone in thinking this. Watching the old seasons bring back some of the classic moments you can't script or stage. And I will say that there have been some moments that are scripted that are funny. Also, let me know if you want to see some older seasons in my videos. I have some ideas on some fun ways to watch them with you. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye!